Now, London's polluted air turned the city into an electric vehicle pioneer. Today's Big Take explains that in a bid to tackle the capital's traffic congestion, the city introduced some of the toughest restrictions on heavily polluting cars. Now, the policies almost flipped a switch on the adoption of electric vehicles. Now, let's bring in Bloomberg's Craig Trudell for more on the story. Craig, I'm really happy to speak to you about this because over the last three weeks, there's such bad news coming out of the UK, if I'm 100% honest, that this is actually a feel-good good news. So what are some of the conversations that you've been having about the impact that's had for EV? Yeah, for me, this really started a, a few months ago when Uber was eager to talk about why uh, they were having such great progress in, in the fleet uh, in the city of London turning over. And it was, a, you know, a lot of companies want to tell a feel-good story about how things are improving uh, within their operations. But this one really stuck out to me because of, of the, you know, sort of long and, and tumultuous history of, of Uber in, in London. Uh, there's been a lot of tension between the mayor's office and this company. Uh, but, but the company really spoke effusively about this idea that road pricing policies was a huge distinguishing factor and, and sort of a driving force in, in why electric vehicles were having so much more success on the platform. You don't necessarily have, you know, a big a difference in terms of incentives. Uh, you know, the, the charging infrastructure is coming along, but it isn't necessarily way ahead of other places. The reason why London has had su such success in drivers uh, going out and getting electric vehicles is it really costs a lot to drive in the city every day unless you're driving an EV now. Yeah. So is it a prescription that other, you know, parts of the world and other metropolises can emulate? Yeah, there's, there's absolutely going to be an effort to replicate this elsewhere. Even in New York City, there's been a lot of talk about that and not necessarily a lot of follow through but we've been sort of assured that this is going to be tried again in New York City. The idea that a company like Uber, where you wouldn't necessarily think that this policy would be in their business interests, the idea that they've come forward and talk about, you know, the fact that this has been, uh, you know, such a, a big uh, driving force and then being able to achieve their sustainability goals does give you some hope that maybe some other cities will try this out because they're getting some, they're, they're seeing the results uh, from the city of London and also perhaps getting some pressure from, yeah. you know, the private sector sector and companies like Uber. I was in Amsterdam yesterday and actually was in a Tesla. It was a taxi. It's always a bit fiddly because you don't know how to open the door. <laughs> yes. You always feel a bit dumb, but then you, f you feel like you're doing something for the environment. Yeah, you're, you're actually, <laughs> we're hearing about that now that uh, there's a big push with Uber actually in the U.S. with more Hertz cars uh, that are Teslas. Uh, a lot of people, you know, walking up to their Uber and having trouble getting into the door. It's a, <laughs> See, interesting. It's a real thing. There yes. you go. It's not just blonde Francine. Craig, thank you so much. Thanks.